One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit, confusing and amusing for the last 21 years, minus 18 years. What is that? Well packed, this guy. And well burnt. So, let's see what's in here. One thing. Aha! Uh -huh. Wow, nice. Boy, that was quick. So this is an ESP32 camera programming module. So it has the ESP32 camera on the top and it has the programming module underneath. So I'd be very interested to see if uh, if that actually works. So I have been doing a little bit of work with ESP32 uh, cameras lately, and I did have one of these modules, but I just cannot for the life of me find it. So this will be useful. This plugs into your computer, and then you can do the programming straight away, which is a lot easier than having wires and everything on a breadboard. So yeah, very pleased to see this guy turn up. Burnt guy. And now cut guy. Tough life for a package. And this is, oh, very small things. All right, let's get the microscope out. SOT 235 package marked RC1F, which I think is an operational amplifier. My spies tell me it's, I think, LMV. 321 and uh, I'm not sure why I order them or what they're here for but they're here so yeah little op amps is um, is what I'm pretty sure that these guys are oh what already opened <laughs> whoops uh, yeah I did open these these are um, little SOT 23 to dip adapters and so when SOT 23 components come in and you want to use them somewhere more often than not it's useful to have uh, a SOT 23 to dip adapter just to take those guys on board and uh, yes yeah, so that works out pretty well I mean you don't really need them as such I, I have actually used a lot of these adapters if these are hard to come by and they're getting more and more expensive these guys are a good alternative so this is a dip 8 to SOP on one side and SSOP on the other side and uh, yeah you can sort of maneuver the components that are you know that are SOT 23 configuration onto these um, with a bit of clever soldering and uh, and get yourself out of trouble but that's not mailbag that's already open that's a bit ridiculous let's try this one all right so I'll just get cut a corner and see what this is Ah, oh, little lasers. So, uh, yeah, been doing a little bit with um, laser gates recently and just wanted to try a few different low power lasers. Let's, um, let's plug them in and see if they work. All right, watch your eyes. Uh, I've got five volts and it's currently limited to, I think, around 80 milliamps. So let's see what happens. Nothing happens. Getting no glow whatsoever through that. That's interesting. Oh, there we go. Better connections would help. Nice. Okay, so that's pulling about about 20 milliamps. And um, yeah, nice little nice little laser. Oh, oh, oh. No, actually, it's pretty low power. So um, yeah, these are quite good. And if you put a photo diode at the other end, you got yourself a nice little um, trigger for whatever you need. Very light package. Hiding inside. Oh. Hiding inside. Looks like. Yeah, I would say these are LEDs. 1206 and 805 LEDs. Let's get the tester out and see what colour they are. And I'm going to need the dexterity of an octopus and the eyes of an eagle, but let's try it. So a little LED tester here, and if I push that, 
and put this on here nothing and on the other polarity or the other side we've got oh there we go so that is an ice blue and uh, what a lovely color and this one the little 805 guy is probably the wrong way. it's not the wrong way around that's nice so that is also ice blue so two lots of ice blue leds smd uh the 805 version and the 1206 version i think a hundred or so um came across my path pretty cheaply so i nabbed them very useful i'm convinced some of these are just empty packages what there's hardly anything in here, surely. Let's have a look. Oh no, we do have something in here. We have something in a Dip 8 package. Can you see what that is? It looks like it says 528AB. And there's a good number of them, 20 or so. Hmm, let's look that up and see what that is. And this is the other side of the chip, Dallas DS1620S, and followed by 9727D1. But I'm thinking the DS1620S is a temperature chip. So I think this guy uh, just measures ambient temperature in the right configuration. So um, I'll get that hooked up at some stage and uh, we'll have a little bit of an explanation. And why would you use one as opposed to the very simple, for instance, LM35? I'm not sure, but we've got a few to have a bit of an experiment with now, which is great. Hmm, just one little corner reveals. Ah, I suspect these are LM35 temperature sensors, of which I am playing with and having a bit of fun lately. Now, let's just have a look. So it is, yeah, LM35. Perfect. Um, so you may have seen recently a... A little video about an outdoor. What is it? A solar. It's a. It's a solar light, really, that I uh, pimped up to uh, to include this, so that it actually uh, blinks according to the temperature. So I'll link that up here. But uh, these are replacement uh, and expanding um, chips for uh, projects like that. Fantastic. Cutting, cutting. Oh. Okay, well that's strange, it's got a little bit of fairy stuff in there and the rest is packaged up in a tape, so not sure what that's about. Looks like DIP8, not DIP8, sorry, SOP8, and we're looking at LM334. Uh, which mm, I want to, well, I'm not sure what that is. Is that comparator or is that op amp? Let's have a look. Not comparator, not op amp, but adjustable current source. Interesting concept, presumably for something like LEDs. I'm not really sure. I'll put the specs up here and then uh, some. At some point in the near future, I'll have a look at these and uh, maybe build a circuit and see what they could be useful for. Interesting little units. Uh, so yeah, current source. Hmm. Wow, well packed. Good sign. Good on the large side. And inside is more packing. What a surprise. Um, hmm, I might go in this way. Very satisfying. And let's try this one as well. And then there we go. And more packing. And inside the packing, inside the packing, inside the packing is... Ooh. 
Looks like solar panels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So these would be, I'm assuming, 2 volts, maybe around 100 milliamp range, and a um, couple of different uh, attachment points there. Uh, very useful for lots of little light, mostly lighting projects, but also things like the recent uh, temperature sensing project. If you don't use a commercial garden light, then uh, you can set your own up here. You can put one of these with the uh, the stable jewel thief, and uh, which I'll link up here, and uh, you've got yourself a circuit to do all sorts of things. As long as it's you know reasonably low current, uh, this is a very useful device. Fits on top of a jar. You know, you can put them on top. I, what I'm really thinking uh, in one uh, project actually is maybe putting them on top of uh, like one of those fake cameras, the um, the CCTV cameras, and it can actually maybe feed constant trickle to a nickel metal hydride inside, and uh, and that might just be enough to uh, to keep it going forever, so I don't have to keep replacing the battery. Good one. Radio, then we're into it, and we've got, got interesting things. Ah, we've got nozzles, different types of three D printing nozzles. Now, from memory, they were uh, different sizes. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'll get them lined up, and we'll have a bit of a closer look. Here are all the different sizes, and one day I'll be brave enough to maybe try some. At the moment, I'm pretty sure I've only ever used 0 0.4. Why that one is stamped differently, I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> this could be quite interesting. But anyway, yeah, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 5.4s, a 0.5, and a 0.6. For sometime in the future, when uh, maybe I'm going to look to experiment a little bit with this 3D printer, A box. Good. We love boxes. And inside, yeah, pretty well packed. We have SOT 89 something or others. I think these are SS8050s and SS. 8055 so that's the um, hmm, PNP and NPM version of one of my favorite little transistors uh, in a SOT89 format. I'm going to get a couple out of here and put them in the tester and see what the tester makes of them. So this guy is called Y2. And this one, Y1. So we'll see which is which when we put them on the machine. And let's try like so. So if I can push that down and also push that, let's see what the tester makes of it. That is a damaged part. Hmm, it's not a good start. We'll try a bit higher. And we'll try pushing there. And the tester says, it says it's a diode, unlikely. We'll give it one more shot. Oh, it's a bit fiddly. And then I might solder them up onto a, an adapter might be the best way to go. Come on, you. All right, there we go. And we'll try this one. Last shot. Diode. Yeah, okay, and uh, let's try the other one. So not very cooperative. And this is the other guy also as a diode. I'm going to solder them up and try testing again.
all soldered up. And if we just plug them, it doesn't matter really which one goes in which because we're not using them as transistors, just testing them. And hopefully this time, with a proper connection, uh, which one are we testing here first? This one is Y2. All right, let's have a go. And Y2 is, it's a PNP. And that's pretty much the specs that I would want for that one. So that's nice. So let's transfer these over to the one that's labeled Y1. So that would be the SS8050 version if it's an NPN. Come on, you get in there. There we go. And let's see what it makes of this one. Yeah, and that's the NPN with, again, pretty much the same specs. So great little transistors, these ones. And I'm looking forward to um, combining them. There's a Darlington combination with uh, a couple of NPNs. There's something called uh, like a shizlik or a shizleki. Or I don't even know how to say it. Sikli. Where you uh, hook up an NPN and a PNP. And I'm just wondering what a PNP and a PNP would look like and what it's called. So a few experiments to be done on these guys, but they are great transistors and a great price. That is the mailbag for the week, and uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.